Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video we're talking about preparedness and I'm kind of breaking it down into small chunks for all of you who are new to prepping or would like to start prepping. I know the world of preparedness guys, it could be somewhat a little bit overwhelming. You will see many videos and I've done many videos myself and you watch other people. Um, it could be really, really overwhelming because we're literally bombarding you with the vast amount of stuff that you need to have to be a, what we call a proper prepper. However, we all have to start somewhere and I'm trying to make it simple because I know it's so, so overwhelming, especially if you're worried about starting prepping because it does look too complicated. First of all, to mention guys, again, as I said before, this kind of preparedness tips, not tips, but the things that we're talking about, we are not aiming them at a nuclear attack or World War Three or alien invasion or anything like that. We are talking about things uh, slightly smaller things like again loss of jobs or inevitable lockdown that's going to be happening in a month or so things like that the things that we can prepare for fairly easily so without the further ado guys is water okay very important to have substitutes not substitutes but ability for you to have water if suddenly the pipe bursts in the middle of the winter you have no water it could be days what are you going to do so guys to have a little bit of water stuck behind However, where you choose to stockpile this, again, check out the channel. I've gone through some of that in the great detail. Water purification and ability to collect your water outside, whatever means possible. Second one, it's food, guys. Okay, we avoid intrusion. Let's not go for buying the dry food, dry beans. We're talking about buy yourself some tins, some easy stuff that you can easily eat without cooking. Any tin food is pretty much able to be consumed as it is without even need for heating. So it's kind of important to be able to have some tins in your stockpile for a preparedness. So if you want to keep it easy, buy stuff in the tins because they already have the liquid content. You don't need to rehydrate. You can warm it up if you have an option to. Otherwise, you're able to eat them right away. Number three, guys, it's heating alternative. It depends, of course, what kind of heating you have in your house. We have oil heating and it is a little bit bothersome, especially when we have issue of getting oil, especially during a COVID or really peak times when the price goes up almost tenfold. So as a preparedness, guys, is having potentially in our instances electric heaters. Yes, electricity costs are stupid money and have been stupid money and only due to increase after the price cap probably. Anyway, however, if an option, guys, we're talking about paying for expensive heating or no heating at all, then knowing what you can have. Also having things like obviously little bit candles or you can buy the gas heaters is also options there for you. So aim this at your family where you live. It could be if you have in the wood burner, that's absolutely great. Make sure you stock up on wood because obviously nothing really can go wrong with wood burners. So make sure you have things. However, strongly advise having things like camping stoves with the little gas cartridges. You can still buy them fairly inexpensive and it's a great thing to have in your preparedness pile. Next thing on the list is lighting. Again, we had numerous times where the power cuts and there'd be no electricity, so there'd be no lighting. Simple thing to have, guys. Have some candles and have some torches. There are multiple of candles available very inexpensively. It's the same with the torches. You can buy torches that go on your head or little torches that a normal hand torch. So there's plenty of options there to be able to light your way forward. Next thing, when I kind of touched already, is the alternative cooking methods. Okay, so if suddenly you have no electricity, have an ability to be able to cook your own food. I.e., if you're literally on the electrics at home, make sure you have a barbecue. Many of us do. So if it's a coal barbecue, make sure you have coal. If it's a gas barbecue, make sure to stock up on those big gas canisters so you'll be able to warm yourself food if you need to. Next thing is pretty obvious, but it is also is a personal hygiene. Again, this is not something we'll probably already have in our little stocks anyway. You have a spare shower gel, a little bit of soap, but if something is very important as a prepper to be able to have a couple of things stashed in behind just in case. Not too far from that, guys, we're talking about the first aid kit. Make sure you at least have your very basics. I know many of us probably have a normal tablets and plasters, but also consider things like a emergency tooth repair kits. Again, going back to the past pandemic, if you remember, the many of the dentists weren't open. So if you had an emergency, obviously it's not a lot you could do. However, having some things like emergency repair could help you as well as some numbing agents. So include this into your first aid kit. Again, you can buy them fairly inexpensive. I bought a tooth repair kit from B&M for under five pounds, but it gives me peace of mind just in case. Next thing, guys, is a sleeping arrangement. 
make sure you know what you could possibly do in a, an emergency. And that could mean anything, guys, from the house being flooded to anything. I don't really want to even think about it, the possibilities that could happen. However, it's very important to know or have a plan of what you're going to do. I totally understand, and I've mentioned this time before, for me, like, bugging out is, like, the last resort altogether. However, have a plan, okay? So, if you have a tent, then it's great. If you don't, maybe consider getting a tent, okay? We have a three-year-old, however, tent is not kind of something I feel that would be appropriate for us to bug out with her. However, as a last resort, it gives you shelter over your head. If you don't for whatever reason or you can't or you don't want to, make sure you know a relative or somebody that you have an agreement with. If something, God forbid, happens, you can just go there and stay there for a few days. I know it sounds really straightforward, guys, but if something, God forbid, happens, last minute you want to do is to make any phone calls and panicking. You would not be thinking straight. So it's really important to have this all agreed in advance. And the last two guys, they're kind of a little bit more like a say, bonus items, but if you wanted to progress a little bit further, is having some spare tools and equipment to be able to fix certain things. If God forbid something happens, again guys, we're talking about instant scenarios, have some sort of tools ready because tools kind of expensive, but you can still pick up things fairly inexpensively if you know where to look. So to be able to have something ready if you need to kind of fix something you have something ready in your garage or in your toolbox because again there could be times where you might not be able to get somebody to come up and help you to do something for one reason or the other so having certain selection of basic tools can get you through a bit of a tough time and the last thing guys it is it's we're talking about communication okay first of all as one of the main things as we know as a preface is to make sure you get all your phone numbers off your phone and have them in paper. I know many of us, we talk about this, we live on our phones all the time, but I dare you question guys, do you know your partner's or your mum's phone number by heart? Some of them, pro some of you probably do, some of you probably don't. I don't know even my own number half of the time. Let me tell you, like, I do know my own number, but I don't know my other half's number by heart because it's on my phone and there's always feel there's no need to do it. However, so it's very important guys to write down your family's phone numbers and addresses just in case because you just never know but i think it's super super important and another bit guys is having some sort of a radio little radio little transmitter that you can pick up i uh, pick up any signals if god forbid something happens if um, an emergency really a normal fm radio will go a long way there are many many other things guys that we need as a preface however i find this is kind of the baseline of the things you need to consider and as i said you can alter this and tailor this to your family okay but they are the basics foundations of your starting prepping journey so i uh, hopefully guys you have found this helpful don't forget thumbs up subscribe if you haven't check out the channel we'll have a lot a lot of information on there about preparedness and i'll see you in the next one hopefully bye bye